Hi, this is Bethany of the Albany Peace Project, and today I'm going to show you a video that just shows us just how important this peace project is. You know, in January of 2014, we have an incredible opportunity. We have an opportunity to add to a body of data that suggests that a collective intention for peace can make a difference in the world. And this comes at such a, an important time in the city of Albany because there's been a spike of violence in Albany just in the recent months. In fact, in the video you're about to see, you're going to hear about how there have been four shots in, since the beginning of December, since December 1, and this was shot on December 18. And there had been four gunshots just in the city of Albany, and I understand that one of them was lethal. So, the, in this video, what you're going to see is something sponsored by SNUG, which is an organization of Trinity Alliance, a wonderful nonprofit in the south end of Albany that really um, serves the, the community there. And SNUG is actually gun spelled backwards. So, it's part of kind of a chapter of Trinity Alliance that helps with anti violence, and they work under kind of the auspices of an organization known as Cure Violence. And the whole tenet of the Cure Violence and Snug is this idea that violence, they consider it a disease, and that if it is treated at particular points in the, the process of violence through the series of what happens through violence, and if skillful people kind of intervene at particular moments, teachable moments, powerful moments, then they can make a difference in the community. And so what you're going to hear about is uh, you're going to see an interview with Clarence Johnson, who is now the program director of SNUG. And then you're also going to hear from Claudia Meyer, who is a chaplain at Albany Medical Center. And what they do is those two organizations work together that when someone's been shot, um, the snug people walk in and they talk to the families and they talk to the victim. And then at Albany Medical Center, they have trained people to um, talk to the people in these very kind of vulnerable moments. And so you're going to hear from both of them. So understand that this is part of the reason why we need to answer the question of whether or not our collective intentions can make a difference. Certainly Dr. John and I are basing our protocol on two other organizations, the Maharishi Organization and Lynn McTaggart, and that research suggests that our collective intention can make a difference and reduce violence. And so in January 2014, we're going to ask you, ask you to really vote with your heart to participate because we don't want to squander this opportunity to add to this body of data and make a difference in the city of Albany, as you're going to see is so important. So just uh, one last thing. What you're going to see is basically what they do within 72 hours of a gunshot in the city of Albany. They convene on the street corner where the gunshot occurred, and people come out from the community and they basically take back the streets. They make this statement to the community that they're not going to cower, that they're not going to hide in their homes due to violence, and that they're going to reclaim it and that peace is their choice. And so please stay to sit back with this video. Just kind of get into the moment of it. You're going to see it's on a street corner in the city of Albany and um, kind of feel the spirit of these people and their hearts and why they do what they do and why it's important for us in January to do what we're intending to do. So enjoy the video. Please sign up. Tell your friends to sign up. Um, we need as many people as possible participating to get a real robust effect. Thank you so much. Take care, and we're looking forward to seeing you on the New Year's Day concert, Unity Church, 1 o'clock, 21 King Street in Albany, um, 1 o'clock with great musicians and great speakers. So come on out. It's the best thing to do on New Year's Day. Take care. Looking forward to see you there. Bye-bye.
people understand that violence is like a disease. It spreads. Right. It does. Look, look where it's spreading to. Central Avenue yeah. and North Lake. Right. And just last week you were... On Judson the First. And then there was one just three before that. Exactly. So there's been three shots in, in a week it's, and a half, it's right? It's spreading. It's spreading. So do you, ha do you have any um, thoughts on why it's spreading? Is there something going on? Well, what's going on is that lack of resources in some instances, in some situations, but they're out there, lack of education, uh, right. communities that are disproportionately affected, right. um, not understanding that it's an epidemic, you know, and, and not being educated, and um, for the most part, high-risk individuals, you know, from the ages of 16 to 25, for the most part, uh, in accordance to our statistics as of now, right. but I've noticed even in the hospital, the younger is getting younger. Right. So right. I heard I heard some buzz about popular kids coming out from the city or like within the last six months. Is that? I, I wouldn't know as far as the city and where right, from. Right. All I know is that yeah, violence think, can come from any direction. Right. Violence isn't just a capital district issue. Violence is a right. global absolutely. issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? But I was just wondering why it, in, in Albany there seemed to be more recently or not? Well, in Albany it has decreased. Okay. But for some reason we had a spike yeah. in this um, within the last few months. Right. And right. one of the issues that was getting cold. So now we have individuals that's not employable or don't have soft skills to get a job or know how to fill out a resume, mm -hmm. right? Um, or learn behavior, observational learning in these communities. So our mission is to um, address and correct the norm that exists within the subgroups and subcultures within these communities that's disproportionately affected. And how do we do that? Well, the first point is to become a change agent, meaning changing the norm that exists there. You know, um, reflecting, um, you know, um, reflecting back to like the incredible messengers saying, hey, I came from this community, I came from this neighborhood, I've been in the institutions, or if I've been with, listen, you two things change. Okay. Just like right now, there's a lot of violence going, and it seems like there's a spiral downward. The way that snub works is to try and influence the norms on the streets so that the spiral can actually go upwards. And the more peace there is and the more uh, it's unacceptable to use violence, the more it's not cool to use guns, things get better and, and they go in the opposite direction. So that's what we're working towards. Right, you know, right. community awareness, and I truly believe, and this is my own opinion, that once a person is aware, you know you're held accountable. Just mm -hmm. like, for an example, and I'm, I'm going to use an analogy, when a teacher gave me an assignment and I didn't know how to do it, but once the teacher taught me how to learn the formula. Right, right. Now the teacher said, okay, you're a guy now. I've taught you. Right. Let me see you figure it out and solve it on your own now. Right. If you need me, here go and assist it. Right, right. You know, because what we're doing is we have to place ourselves in positions to really give back and really be like a messenger, right, you know, a right. role model. The whole the light kind of thing. And, so. and, and one thing I think that goes unnoticed for the most part, and something you asked earlier about funding, right? We're, under, we're understaffed, we're underfunded. We need more, it's, think about it, Albany, you have the West End, South, you know, for the most part, you have South End and the West Hill, right? Um, that predominantly is a high risk area, right? How can six individuals alone do it? We're not superheroes. Right, right. It's hard. Right. So we need the support. And then when we have individuals such as yourself, even though you come and you came and hey, let me get an interview right, or right, you know, let right. me get some information, you're still here and you stood here. Right. That means a lot to me, and I'm gonna let you know that. Aww, thank even you. though you stood well, here, this, and it's cold. It and Claudia here. came. And, and tell me about Claudia. How did you? You're collaborating. I'll you let Claudia with, tell you. You work with all the men, is that right? Yeah, I'm a, a part of the chaplain department, and oh, nice. so. A couple of years ago, when the program first got off the ground, we developed a protocol at Albany Med, um, and the reason why the doctors were uh, really supportive of the idea is because there's an evidence base for the fact that this kind of protocol works. You know, just really? like it's violence, violence really, really can be treated like an epidemic, wow. and just like there are root causes that if you begin to treat them there, it can stop the epidemic can slow its progress. Um, so that evidence was shown to the doctors and they were fully on board. Wow. And so what happens is when a stabbing or shooting victim comes into Albany Med, mm -hmm. um, they are obviously treated medically first. They may be questioned by the police, but immediately after that, the social work staff or the chaplain staff coordinates with the snug workers to 
see if the patient is willing to talk, and if they are, we bring them in to talk with the victim as soon as possible after the incident, because we find that that's kind of a vulnerable moment for them when they're making decisions about, wow, is this a wake-up call? Do I need to change some things in my life? Or am I, am I getting prepared to retaliate? Am I going to tell my friends who did this to me and they're going to go back out and strike again? And the snug workers are there with street credibility to say, this is, this is not a good choice for you. Here are some other options. And I've been where you've been. And I've lived through some bad choices. So let me point out to you a different way that you can respond to this. So we, we hook them in, get them into the hospital as soon as possible to interact with the victim. And then from there, they'll do case management. They'll follow up with that victim. They'll follow up with the families. They'll give them the resources that they need to step away from violence and a life of crime and a life that leads to jail to a life that's more productive. Wow. If anyone wanted to kind of volunteer or contribute or whatever, who would they talk to at Albany Med? Um, as far as I know, probably the best route to volunteer okay. would be SNUG. I mean, yep. they need folks on the street. They need right. folks to help them with their PR. Um, we've got trained chaplains and, and employed social workers right. who are trained right. in order to do that connection. Um, right. That's a pretty specialized skill set, but right. I know that right. SNUG is always looking right. for warm bodies and folks to carry the message. Okay, great. I'm sorry, your name was? That's okay. Claudia Meyer. Meyer. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Welcome. Thank Good you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out.